So you want me to stop? We are live. Bit? We are live right now. Yo. Okay. So, so delegate air, you gonna be funny with that? <laughs> so, she was for the greet, greet, greetings. This is at ease with Sia and delegate air La Cherise on the late night. Late night. Remember last time we had a late night on the floor and you were acting crazy and it was hilarious. That's what well, I'm about. I was acting crazy then. I'm not going to act crazy tonight, but there is a lot to say. And I'm so excited to have some very special guests with us this evening. Absolutely. We have Delegate Jeff Bourne from Richmond, the 71st District. What up? What up? Glad to be back with y'all at ease. <laughs> Who else we have, Delegate Aaron? We also have Delegate Jay Jones future attorney general for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Good evening, ladies. And we have the delegate Lamont Bagby from Henrico with us this evening. And they, they kind of call us something when we all get together. What they call us, y'all? <laughs> Somebody should put it in the in the comments if they know. If you know, you yeah. know. If you know, you know. <laughs> put it in the if comments. If you know, you know. I think it's the most, it's, it's the most talked about in mm -hmm. private a uh, collection of people and we know you talk about it and sometimes you talk about it with us individually so if you know then you know and look if 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 don scott was here all i would have to do is quote the jay-z lyric it's a secret society all we ask is trust who <laughs> so we're gonna talk about that we, that is a amazing segue into where we are headed tonight so i just want to see jeff um you know, this episode of, of At Ease is called Setting the Record Straight. And I think uh, there's no one more perfect to start off this conversation uh, than you. So we just gonna give you a few minutes to talk, you know, set some records straight. What you got for us? Oh, man. Well, uh, you know, let's let's. Hey, what's let's the score of the Laker game? <laughs> Anybody know? <laughs> I need to score the league again. Put it, put it in the comments if you know. So help, help put it, them on Put it in the put comments, it. yeah. Put it in the keep, comments. Keep them updated somehow. Somebody ask Terry, was it scored a Laker game? Well, look. This um, is what Delegate Aaron and I have to deal with, y'all. Every day. Let's, uh, let's talk about um, qualified immunity. Um, Friday, uh, we thought that uh, families and victims of police brutality had um, lost out on the opportunity to get some form of justice in the civil side of our court system. Um, there was a lot of shenanigans, uh, mumbo jumbo, word salad, um, reasons as to why it went down. Uh, over the long holiday weekend, I think people got religion, um, thanks to all the supporters out there and the, the true people who are about this reform life. Um, uh, we got to reconsider that vote today. Uh, and qualified immunity is on to the Senate, uh, which is what we wanted because um, just a few short months ago, um, we were we were we were cast as the um, place where good criminal justice reform went to die. The House of Delegates. Um, so we're sending them some good stuff, and let's go see what we're going to see what the Senate has to has to do with it and what they have to say about it. Um, but um, if there are any other questions about qualified immunity and how we got here, it, it is a shame um, that uh, we had to go through all, all these uh, legislative and procedural gymnastics to get to a place where um, at least the House believes that um, law enforcement officers who cause harm to people and violate their constitutional rights uh, can at least um, get a hearing on the merits. Uh, and not be not not be in law law enforcement cannot be shielded by uh, a judicially created uh, defense. So, um, shout out to all the people who were with me from day one, these four included. Um, you know, ride or die. And I think it's important that this evening we're talking about setting the record straight. And so, let us know in the comments if you have questions about anything that we talk about tonight. If you sort of suspected something, wasn't really sure, and you really want to know, this is your opportunity to ask and be told. Um, and, and so as you normally do when you interact with Delegate Price and I, 
do ask us your questions and add your comments as we have this conversation this evening. Just, hey, Lamont, I don't know if you saw the comments. It's 3740 Houston. He's watching on his phone, like right off to the side. Not what I wanted to hear, man. Me either. Me either, bro. Oh, Me either. Bringing it back. Bringing it back. Okay. Okay. So, so Jay, yeah. you know, you you have been a fighter for justice right alongside Delegate Bourne, Jeff. So why was this important for you? Because I know you're a chief pro on this bill, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So why was this important for you? Well, you know, look, I'm a lawyer. And so I've, I've dealt with this stuff in my legal practice. And, and this is something that for, I think, communities of color, especially, this isn't new, right? This concept is not something that just came about. You know, this has been uh, on the books, you know, judicially created for, for decades now. And as I said, I think on the floor, you know, the, the doctrine of qualified immunity has its root in the, in the Ku Klux Klan, right? Post, post, post Civil War. Uh, and so, you know, this is one of those clearly identified areas where um, especially the Black Caucus has been talking about this for a long, long time. And so when I got here three years ago, it was really important to me that we continue to try to push and build. And it is no secret to anybody, right, who's, who's in America that we're in this moment in, in Virginia and across this country where we really need to reassess where we have been and where we want to go. Uh, and so for, I think a lot of us, this bill was a no brainer. I mean, if you think about it at the federal level, you have Democrats and Republicans who have been pushing this policy because they know that if you are a fighter for liberty, for freedom, those buzzwords that our folks, our friends on the right like to use, this is your bill. And so when, when, when Jeff and I were talking about, okay, how can we collaborate? How can we push this ball forward for a special session? This was something that immediately that came to mind. <clears throat> and so I was happy to be a chief co-patron with Jeff. We worked so hard on this over the last several months with stakeholders um, and having these conversations with people. And, and I think there is this, this perception that we just put stuff up and, and we don't talk to anybody. Um, that's not true, right? We have phone calls all day. It takes us away from our day jobs, from our families to try to get this right. And, and I think what you saw over the course of, of several months is the by, and the byproduct was a good piece of legislation that really should have been supported by a lot of people. And, and what I'm proud of, one, one is that it finally got through, but two, that I was able to stand with Jeff to do it right along with you guys and some other, um, some really, really passionate folks. But, you know, again, this is one, one bill out of a lot, but, and I, I think this is really important to consider is that this has a, has a marginal impact, right? It'll have a big impact, but it'll be marginal. It's not going to impact most people on the day to day. But when you talk about people who have been victims of police brutality, of, of misconduct, they deserve a day in court, right? And that to me seems like a basic American right. And to see people continue not to support this is, is really disappointing. And, and I'm, I'm excited that we can go to the Senate and have these conversations too, because I wanna see where everybody is. Because the message you send on this vote is a, is a real clear um, signal to communities of color, right? Do, where do you stand with us, right? And how do you feel about our issues and things that are important to us? And and Marcy, let me just close, just add on to what Jay said because that was the that was the point um, that we we talked about throughout this whole J, Jay and I. Like we wanted an up or down vote because we saw a lot of people um, with signs at rallies after George Floyd. <laughs> we saw them post Black Lives Matter, use all the hashtags, all that. Um, but we really wanted to see if their words and their actions matched up and whether or not when it came time to hit red or green, um, if they were going to be with us, remain silent or actually be against us. And, you know, at the end of the day, we know where people are. We know where people are right now. And, and I'll tell you, and I don't want to step on Jeff, but I think there were people who we expected to be a part of this conversation who were silent who had a chance to step up and, and be with us. But I think that their silence speaks volumes. Uh, and I, you know, I talk a lot about being proactive as opposed to reactionary. Uh, and I think this is one of those times when you'll see people who sort of waited for us to see how it was gonna work out, kind of jump on the bandwagon a little bit. But you know, what I don't want people to lose sight of is that again, this bill doesn't do anything to take the sort of law enforcement mechanisms that we know away, right? This is only for situations in which there has been misconduct, excessive force, right? The rare instances. I was on a community policing forum tonight in Norfolk, and I was very, very, very proud to talk with Larry Boone because Norfolk does a really good job with this stuff, right? We have our, we have our challenges, but 
these suits, right, these lawsuits are so infrequent. And I think there was this, I, this, this attempt to make it seem as if we were going to bankrupt the police through giving this civil redress, that we were somehow harming their ability to do their job. Um, a lot of these red herrings that were thrown out by you know, people who, again, preach liberty and freedom. And so it just never really matched up for me. And, and so I, again, I would stress that now people have a really good idea of where you are when it comes to policies that impact um, Black people. And, and I think you both make really great points. And I, I'd like to pivot to Chairman Bagby because from the onset of this special session, there has been this attempt to pit us against police, against law enforcement um, on our journey of criminal justice reform. And can you just talk a little bit about how that is absolutely further, furthest from the truth? It's not the case. And, and, and the truth about what it is we're trying to accomplish for our communities. Are oh, you trying to get me hyped? Late it. In, in ease. Come on. Wait. Okay. Wait. Welcome to the welcome to at ease, delegate bag. But I do want to say everybody that is watching that that is finally being able to take a break after the first day of school. I'm glad you got through it. Um, and 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 I think someone mentioned. I think Jay mentioned it. Like this is this is not the norm for us at this time of the of the year working on this legislation, but it's not something that we. Um, take for granted when I take this grant for granted this moment. Um, I've been talking a lot about how individuals before us are, 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 are sort of always paid attention, um, but particularly the Black Caucus Chairs, Dwight Jones, Gerald Jones, even Doug Wilder, all of them are texting me and say, hey, the stuff that you, were, you, you all are pushing, I had that bill back in 1988. I had that bill in 99. I appreciate you all trying to bring back parole. The Black Caucus stuck together in the 90s to fight it. They didn't win the battle, but they stuck together. And so, it, 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 I mean, people talk about their ancestors' dreams, but we have individuals that are sitting right here with us now uh, that are watching us move forward this legislation that is going to save lives. Um, and, 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 and there's no other way to put it. It's actually saving lives. And folks have, have sort of tried to change the narrative um, and, and you all have touched on it. Um, they have tried to make it seem as though uh, we are trying to do something that's gonna put other individuals' lives in danger. But, I, but we're, we're not only doing what, what I think is needed to make individuals that are out in the community safe, but also those individuals that are in what we call the correctional facility. Um, but it hasn't been fully a correctional facility. Um, it has been just a place for mass incarceration. And so our good friend, Don Scott, has been fighting a, a, a really aggressive battle. Um, and I can't wait to take that vote tomorrow. Uh, Jay and Jeff talked about how they want things to go up on the board. The Legislative Black Caucus put up a legislative agenda um, that um, particularly uh, Delegate Price and uh, Adele worked on to make sure that all of our bills were included. Um, and, and, and I really, 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 really thought that we weren't gonna be able to get as much done. But collectively, everyone played their position. All these different bills Folks didn't fight over the bills. They said, I'm doing this. I'm doing no not. I'm doing um, uh, um, Juneteenth. I'm doing um, uh, evictions. We, it's so much to do because in every corner of the Commonwealth, in every segment of the Commonwealth, people that look like us are negatively impacted. So there was so much work to do when the door was open. And so I appreciate those individuals that have gone out um, and protested in whatever form they, they felt necessary. But one of the things we, 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 we also saw the other day on the floor, uh, on the virtual floor, was some grandstanding. Oh. Um, oh. And the grandstanding was an attempt to change the narrative. And so what we won't allow individuals to do is to change the narrative. One, to make people think that they're trying to do the right thing. 
two to make to allow people to think. I feel like I feel like I have to just jump in and run that back. Okay. To make people think. Yeah. That because, they're trying to do the right thing. That's the reason why people. Why we keep saying, "Let's go on the board. Let's go on the board. Let's show. You know, show me. You know, show mm -hmm. me." Yeah, I mean, look, and and I'll, and I'll jump in here because I think this is important. The things that we're talking about in, the, in this bill in particular, and what, what I think what gives me a lot of angst is that you've got Black voices, right, and, and communities of color who have said, hey, this is a thing that has affected us and our ability to move through life and move through these spaces for a long time. And people say that they're with us, right? They say, that, and, and, and I get a little frustrated sometimes because people say, hey, take us to one of your churches. Take us to your community centers. Let's, let's go. And then when push comes to shove and you can go up on that board, red, green, yellow, not vote, it disappoints me because it feels like the things that we have been saying and the voices that have not been heard, not just for decades, right? Because Lamont made a good point about the Black Caucus that came before us. This is hundreds of years, right? This yeah. is generations. And everybody wants to talk about riding the ship, right? And charting a new course and turning that ship around in the middle of the ocean. And this was a really great opportunity to do that. And, you know, I was disappointed on Friday and, I, and I'll be quite frank and honest with- Present you. tense. This is with, still. But, you know, but, but, still. and I will take you guys to a, to a place. I called Jeff on Friday night after all that. And I said, how are you doing? And he said, you know, I'm, I'm exhausted and I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I think that summed up a lot of how we felt because we worked so hard on this. And, and I give a lot of respect to the people who had called us to, to, for help, right? Say, so how do I understand this bill? How can we get to a place where I can get to yes, right? Tell, walk me through it, right? Give me the pros, the cons, whatever I'm saying. And then to sort of be blindsided at the very end. It was- incredible. It wasn't blindsided, there was a plan. Yeah. There was a, a, a deliberate Stop plan. It. Wait, Stop hold on. It. They don't know you Stop being sarcastic. It. They don't know you being sarcastic. We got some newbies watching. They don't know you being sarcastic. <laughs> Let that man finish his point. <laughs> well, you know, look, I, I was working, right? And, I, and, I, and if you had asked me a couple hours before session, I said, we, okay, we're good. We got the votes. And then to watch my little digital tablet, you know, my soul was, was a little deflated. And so, you know, it was frustrating because I feel like I felt that so many times and I had convinced myself that this was going to be different. And it only served to renew my purpose to keep going. Well, see, because, Jay, 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 that's, 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 the, that's the thing that I believe a lot of folks bank on is that we think we always think things are going to be different and they, they, they do a good job of convincing us that they're going to be different. Mm -hmm. And even when they're not, we continue to be loyal. Right. And I know that's probably a different conversation for a different at ease, but, but, yeah, but, but, but I do want uh, folks to, to listen. Hold on, hold on, Lamont, hold on. We, let, let me just see where we were going with this. Cause I think we were headed somewhere. We're going to come back. Yeah, because Jay, Jay, Jay interrupted me, then Jeff interrupted him, so I feel like... No, La Charisse interrupted him, La, interrupted him before I did. This is at ease with Thea and La Charisse. Let us remind you. Yeah. I, will, I will come back to you, big baby. <laughs> I promise. I promise. You next. I promise. He didn't finish his, his thought. I just, I just want to know where Jeff was headed. No, I mean, I, where I'm headed is, is like, you know, on... Uh, there are a lot of issues that come before the General Assembly every year that, that have an impact on black and brown communities that we represent. But there are a handful, probably every five years, right, that are monumental and extremely consequential. And every conversation I've ever been in about one of these issues, black voices have pled and begged and, and, and just 
poured their hearts out about the impact that it has on these on the communities that we represent. And you see, you know, people will put their heads down, people will nod like they're paying attention and, and agree. But when it comes time to actually do something, they do what's comfortable for them. And the two that I can, rem the, the two that come to mind most, most recently are one, the redistricting vote, and two, these, these, these criminal justice police reform issues. We have to nitpick until the nth degree on issues that are going to affect black communities. Yeah, that's right, say it. But, <laughs> but, but, but when we're talking about metro funding or transportation or whatever, like all issues that we all vote for, right? Because we understand. But I've said this a lot. Every base group for the Democratic Party over the last 10 months has won. Labor has won. We've done a lot of great things for our, our working families. Our LGBTQ plus family has, has done amazingly well with the Virginia Values Act. We have done, we have, we have, we have done a lot for our immigrants and non-native um, communities. But every time the black communities issues, the issue of the number one issue that we raise, it's like, ah, well, you know, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we water it down? Can we, can, can we wait? It, we, we'll take care of your next go around. Well, you know what? That, that song is getting old and played out. And like, I'm just so glad to be serving with people that, 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 are, that are as tired as I am. And, and I'm going to add in just like a small piece to what you said, which is that not only is it issues that they are comfortable with, but I think I am really tired of hearing issues that will protect me being reelected. And in this moment, there is no room for that. We have people in our communities whose lives are at stake. And if you are here and you vote in support of those issues, you should have no problem being reelected because everyone should care about issues that impact black and brown communities. But if all you can look at is polling numbers and how you think that this issue will impact your polling, then perhaps you might need to find something else to do. Delegate Bagby. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming back to you as promised. Um, I'm not ready right now. Okay, well then I wanna add something to- I'm, 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 I'm pouting right now. I know. And, and we're gonna give you a hug when it's safe. Yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait till somebody gets into saying something, and then I'm gonna interrupt with mine. Okay. Well, you can you can interrupt me because I'm the one I'm the one that did it. But but there's two two things I want to add, and it's this Benjamin Franklin quote that people have been throwing around, where it's like justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are. And that's the thing. It's like to me, we have allies within the caucus. Period. I will say that. And they come and they say, Sia, when you said so-and-so, that's not my lived experience. I have no point of reference for that. Can we talk? And I'm like, absolutely. And we talk. I do the same thing with, I mean, Delegate Ferris be putting out some bills. I don't know about cows. I don't know about it. I will ask him about cows. It's the same way when we treat these regional things, when we're talking about the mountains, when we're talking about the coast, we can sit down and have a conversation about it. But when we are talking about black suffering, there is something in some people's minds that would just shut down to remain comfortable. But there are some, and I promise you, some, there are few, there are few that we can have those conversations with. And I want to, at this moment, say thank you because we can't do this alone. There are only yeah. 23 of us. You know, we, right. can't pass, we can't pass our bills by ourselves. We need y'all to understand. And that's why it hurts so much. And, and uh, Born, I just wanted to go to you shout real quick because- Krizik. Yeah, shout out Paul Krizik. <laughs> I mean, just, I, we probably should not start naming them because if we no, no, forget no. somebody, it's going to get dangerous. I've sat beside him since I got there, so. No, yeah, no, I sit beside him in, uh, in, a, in a committee. So like, but there are really, really good people who really care. And because they realize they don't know, they ask questions. But there is a term for what happened for the pretend allies 
that that Delegate Bourne you have talked mm-hmm. about on the House floor, and that term is gaslighting. That is what I felt like this weekend, knowing the blood, sweat, and tears. Because because Gaylene, the Conoyton of Hampton, at the in, uh, Hampton NAACP in the state conference, she pointed back to Delegate Christian carrying in the um the uh, civilian review board in 1995. 1995, I was still in high school. So, so this is blood, sweat, and tears uh, that have gone into the bills just for it to be hijacked for stunts and, and likes and giggles and stuff that I don't want to curse. But like, can you can you talk about gaslighting and what that felt like this weekend? Before And before you do that, I just have to add in, because I want you to address this too. I think the worst part about seeing what played out over the weekend was not the mere act of manipulation, but it was the belief by some voters, by some advocates that this person was well intended, that the the direction or what they claimed to be doing was accurate. And that doesn't just reflect poorly on the work that is being done, but when you think about When people cast their votes, it's an emotional act and it's built on trust. That reflects all of us Mm -hmm. and the trust that we want to have with the people that we both represent, advocates, activists, all of the above. And so I, I, I feel like I have to add, and I think that is the part that hurt me the most, to see the manipulation. And then can you also add as to whether or not you could pass the math SOL? Because, you know, math is hard sometimes. Uh, if you could address those issues. <laughs> no. <laughs> is they setting the record straight? <laughs> I mean, we setting it all straight, right? I mean, I, Y'all got me up at 1024. Well, this is no, what no, happens. I, but I had to go out video. I'm about to go to sleep watching the game. No, stop. So I wanted to, I wanted to see if y'all can end on a positive note before I go to bed. But we have positivity waiting. I just wanted to make sure we- But I'm not going to be up waiting for it. So I'll, I'll ask y'all like- this Sir, is, make a closing comment because we not done. Yeah, I know you're not done. I'm closing out. But I was just like thinking earlier today, like all the things that we've been able to accomplish, uh, particularly in the last 10 months or so. And like, again, going back to some of the things that have been worked on, like, do y'all have like the two things that, pop out in your head or like the two things that you're like you're most excited about no explanation needed just the two things is this a rhetorical question you asked no, i got mine <laughs> i got mine what are yours lamont i'll give you one um and that is the funding for hbcus okay I know all y'all wish y'all had that one, but <laughs> I mean, because like to see so many people upset to see HBCUs finally get their fair share. Less than. It, it, it was, that was, that was like almost like, it wasn't something to celebrate because you know, if we ever lose this majority, if we ever lose the strength that we have, um that's in jeopardy but to see hbcu see to see the president of, of norfolk state and the president of, of, virginia, of virginia state come in year after year asking for this trying to build relationship with with appropriations to see them finally walk away satisfied and then COVID hit um and it was all in jeopardy yeah. but i was happy uh last La Charisse and, and the chairman of appropriations and all those on finance in the Senate stuck with it and said, we're, we're going we're gonna to continue to figure out how to keep our promise. So that's one for me. I'll just yeah, I mean, go ahead. Go ahead, Delegate Eric. I'm sorry. I, I, will, I will say that number one, I thank you, Lamont, for Delegate Bagby, Chairman Bagby, for, this presence. for bringing us back in that direction um, because. I think that's part of the reason why we can feel such disappointment when something doesn't go our way, because we know the value that our voices have when we add it to perspectives of uh, issues that are critical to the Commonwealth. And so I think 
that is absolutely right. And so I'll just quickly say maternal mortality. Uh, when Delegate Price and I began having the conversation about mothers, black and brown mothers and babies in the Commonwealth and the rate at which they were dying, our initial conversations were with people who had little awareness, disinterest, um, and zero recommendations for what we should do moving forward. And that goes to the highest levels of our government saying, this is on our list, we'll come back to it. But meanwhile, we have black and brown mothers and babies dying. And okay. so since that moment in time, we have been able to make incredible progress on actually uh, putting in certified doulas, uh, trying to figure out how to get them reimbursed so that uh, low income and or higher risk mothers have access to that type of support. I mean, that is one that I am extremely proud of, especially at a moment when Virginia is quite frankly leading the way as you have other states who are grappling with what does a solution look like to actually put a dent in this challenge that we are experiencing all over the country. So I'm extremely proud about that as well. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and just to piggyback on what um, Eric has been saying, we, we have accomplished a lot, right? Um, but I think part of my disappointment, a large part of my disappointment, it, the point, disappointment is rooted in the fact that we all know as much as we have accomplished and much as we've got done, there is so much more to, to do. And that's why we continue to fight the way that we fight for these issues. Um, I mean, to think that you know, we, we have taken some good steps towards disrupting the school to prison pipeline by, you know, limiting the number of days you can long-term suspend a student, not allowing criminal charges on disorderly conduct. The fact that landlords now cannot discriminate against voucher holders simply because they have a voucher. The fact, and, and Delegate Bagley, he, he might be, the Lamont might be the most humble dude I know, right? But that predatory lending bill that he passed this year. Well, number one, number two, man. Why are you taking my bill, man? <laughs> hey, man, I put like, a pin in that one. Like, Let him get that one. Let him get that one. But, but, here, that but here's the thing. And, and I, I just, uh, um, I just, I, I just think we are so we're we're on the cusp of something great. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's so disappointing for folks who enjoy success, have enjoyed success in 2020, that was largely built on the backs of black voters, especially black women voters, to look in their face on some of these issues, whether it be monuments, we got some Democrats that were soft on monuments, whether it be some of this criminal justice reform, all these issues that, that, that are important to us, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't sit in a session. I don't know how you do it. You listen to Delegate McQueen, you listen to Delegate Ward, you listen to Delegate Tyler talk about their experiences and still vote against a monument bill. That's, that's asinine and, and unconscionable to me. And, 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 and going back to, I think one of the initial question uh, Delegate Eric had for me, um, when we were on the floor the other day and Republicans wanted to talk about or ask, I think they asked Delegate Eric, who who helped you or who uh -oh. have you been working on the bill? Uh -oh. it, it's, 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 it's like we work with everybody and make the argument about every single piece of legislation. Uh, Jeff and I, uh, with that predatory lending bill, <laughs> which we have been working, I mean, again, been working on for 20 years, we've been working on that. Jeff and I, a couple of days before a session, met with every lobbyist that had a client in the lending business. I'm not gonna say all of them are predatory, but we, Jeff and I met with all of them, one all together, he and I yep. and all of them. And we laid out the entire bill we talked about the entire bill. And, and I'm really proud of the fact that everyone stuck together on that bill. It, it, it was one of those instances in which Democrats held 
tough on that bill. We didn't change anything right. to, to, to cater to those predatory lenders. They came in and they made those same stories that we're hearing um, related mm -hmm. to law enforcement. Oh, mm -hmm. we're going to lose law enforcement. Law enforcement. They were saying the same thing. Oh, we're going to lose these lenders that we that, that are critically needed in the impoverished communities. Um, yeah, we're going to lose those ones, those individual lenders, but we're going to get individuals that are going to make good loans. Uh, and so seeing, that's individuals, the, that's the seeing individuals come in um, and, and do good by individuals that need the help the most, the most vulnerable individuals, um, that we, we are here to serve. Um, it, it, it speaks because again, they ask the question to delegate air and they get on the floor and speak on the bill and they haven't even talked to the patron. Nope. Delegate Bagby, you're gonna get me worked up, but I'm gonna say if we're not new to this, we true to this. Yeah, Jodis has said, come and talk that to part. me. <laughs> that part. Hey, but listen, he, listen. He, he, so, he, he, he don't wanna leave, but, but this is what I was gonna say, because Jeff hit it too, but I think, the way we talk about issues is about school to prison pipeline, right? That is a coded phrase for black issues, right? For black people, right? When people say socioeconomic, we're talking about black people. And it strikes me, right? When you have softer terms to talk about that stuff, people come over a little bit. And because Jeff and I have worked for three years, right? At least on the school resource officers issue. Right, and, and shout to Mike Mullen, Tyler Van Valkenburg, because they were doing the same the stuff with us, right? With data collection, MOUs, disorderly conduct, and, um, and uh, right. training standards. And they were, I mean, that, that's, that's great stuff, right? But there was that school to prison pipeline. And so it was easy to sort of hide behind that. But when you talk about justice reform, right? You talk, and, and I'll say, and within justice reform, voting comes in there too, because we haven't even talked about that. Right. Uh, because one of the things that I'm most proud of is the, is the early, early, uh, no excuse absentee voting, right? So we can start voting on September 18th. That's huge. The next step, right? The, the next frontier that I'm coming with in 2021 is the automatic restoration of voting rights. Because, and that's, come up, and, and that's come up every year, right? That's come up every single year. But that to me is the biggest and most important thing for the black community in Virginia, period, full stop. And, and here's the thing, like, and, and I know this is kind of a non sequitur, but um, Chairman referenced positivity that's come out of this and all the good things we've done. And Delegate Price, you said, you talked about some of the allies that we do have. Um, I think it's our voices that are helping change some, of, bring some more allies into the space, right? And so I know um, in particular on um, the immunity issue, some of our some of our friends who who abstained are getting a hard time right now. But the fact that and and, and I, I really don't want to call names, but I will in this particular instance because I think it helps make me make my point. The fact that Kelly Fowler was just about to have a baby and drove back from Virginia Beach to Richmond to vote against the constitutional amendment for redistricting because she heard our voices, because yep. she listened. Those are the type of allies that we want and need. Those are the ones. And, 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 and I know that, that for many folks, he's, shout out Delegate Mullen, he's an acquired taste, right? Like, <laughs> but, no, for real, for real. Like, like, but, that's, but I that's, think- That's coffee, I think if we're, we're, three of us. But I think if, I think if we're objective, Mike Mullen was an early supporter of the immunity issue. I, I yeah. bounced off him because he's a prosecutor, right? And and and, right. and I want to get his perspective because if you don't get him, like your your, your road is harder. But yeah. he was an early supporter. Like he helped. Like so. So I think our voices are not only moving votes; they're moving minds. Um, at least within the caucus, we just haven't gotten to the point where um, we've gotten everybody on everything, which we probably won't. But um, the fact that we still have some folks who, who represent areas that um, would, would pull a stunt like they did with Senator Lucas and still vote against these criminal justice reforms and the monument issues. When I'm you know, sorry, I didn't hear you. Could you say that again? 
yeah, I mean, you heard me. I so. Well, I just, I mean, because because redistricting was brought up, I definitely want to say, uh, since we are setting the record straight, that the uh, proposed constitutional amendment should be voted down. We encourage you to vote no on number one. I'll put a link in where you can uh, find out more information because that amendment does not end gerrymandering, but House Bill 1255 did. And I had been working with advocates and fighting for criteria for which redistricting must meet for the districts, right? So it's like, you know, we were drawing our own lines and so at least have some rules to it, right? <laughs> so this would make political, racial, and prison gerrymandering illegal. And that went into effect July 1st. So if anybody tells you that gerrymandering is legal in Virginia, send them my way because House Bill 1255 stopped that. So that was my first one. And the conversation that ensued uh, around redistricting, it was really interesting to me because some of the folks talking about how, how narratives get flipped and, and gaslighting, some of the folks that are responsible for the racially gerrymandered districts that got thrown out by the Supreme Court and had to be redrawn by the special master are now the ones that are being hailed as gods of fair and independent redistricting. And I was in those back rooms and I remember how some of those folks that wanna call us, uh, you know, say that they're our allies. When we were trying to get districts that gave black people equal votes, they were trying to pick up political wins. So they were trying to trade racial gerrymandering for political gerrymandering for their own comfort, for their own elections. And now you telling me it's a good idea to put eight of us at the table to continue to draw those lines as it would put into the constitution. And that is a hard no uh, for me. So Delegate Bagby, House Bill 1255 was one of mine from this year. Yeah. And I know that we're talking about the highs right now. I wanted to go, yeah, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. This your show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance. I just, I really have to say this. And I know we are not at the point where I get to say what's most critical about this moment that we're in. But Delegate Price made a really good point. And I'm just going to make it plain. I love all of my colleagues uh, professionally. I appreciate their willingness to serve, but I think it's really important for voters to know, for advocates to know, for activists to know, and I assume some do, but all don't. All Democrats are not created equal. There is a clear spectrum that we are talking about. That is, this is what we are describing on this call. You have members that are prepared to do the work that impacts our communities. That's all about progressive issues. But you have a lot of members that are still present today that would like to be uh, not talking about these issues, that have a base that supports them not talking about these issues. And they are roadblocks every step of the way and will continue to be as we are trying to bring about criminal justice reform and a number of other issues that impact Black and Brown communities. That's right. Lamont. You should you should make your point because I feel like you had something really good to say. He did. He always does. Always. No, read your text, Jay, and then you talk. <laughs> you don't oh. run this. Stop trying to orchestrate on our show. Hey, listen, <laughs> shout, what you want to do? Hey, listen. But for real, wait, wait, wait. Shout, out, shout, out, shout out, shout out, to Chairman Bagby because the the, the work that he's done as chairman of the Black Caucus over the last. Two years, three years. It ain't easy. Ain't nobody want nobody wants that. I mean, no. and and no. Um, his leadership style has has absolutely been perfect for the moments that we've been in. So um, so so I know um, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And all of us are new to our roles and have different roles that are, we are um, uh, learning to embrace. And so I do want to shout out um, a person that has been working on criminal justice reform with us and a part of our BLBC caucus. Um, but she also is the ma uh, majority leader. She is the court chair. She is the uh, 
uh, chair of the new name. What's the new name of it? Justice Commission. Justice Commission was oh. was, was criminal. formerly known as a Crime Commission. Got it. Um, but and she's carrying one of the biggest bills um, this session focus on exp expungement. And well, so that makes two, two, two of the biggest bills. Yeah. Don't forget civilian review boards. Yes. Yeah. So, and, so. and, and, and for, for those that are watching and those that will watch this, I commend to you the Courts of Justice Committee. Wait, can we say your name? Charnell Heron. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> but, but I commend to you and go watch her closing on the expungement bill. Um, it if it doesn't touch your soul, then you don't have one. Um, and the, the long story short is many of these bills, uh, especially the automatic uh, expungement, is about what, what's at the core of our country. And that's that we are a country and, and, a, and a system of second chances and redemption. <laughs> and this bill is about redemption. Um, and so I commend that to you. Watch her speak, watch the passion, uh, feel it. Um, and, and, and you'll understand why uh, we fight for, so hard for these things. And if I can say her name, I would also like to plug the video of Delegate Aired as she was closing before the vote for House Bill 5099, which is the Breonna Taylor bill to ban no-knock warrants here in Virginia. I cried. Like, I, can't, I, can't, I can't believe we ain't talked about that yet. Well, I, I want to give her a second, but I think I want people to, to know, right? Like we're, we're talking about qualified immunity. We're talking about a lot of stuff. It gives me great joy. And I, I sit next to Jeff on the floor and, and we have a really good time. But we've done some stuff and we do, and now it's virtual. But every time we pass one of these bills, every time we, we are, are moving the ball forward, I feel like we're taking a brick out of, out of the proverbial like mass incarceration prison that has been built by the people on the other side of the aisle for decades. And there are people who are sitting in there still who built that prison. And every time we are pushing this ball forward and we're making these gains, it's like we're dropping a brick on their head. And I love, 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 love watching their faces as it happens because they can't stop it. And you can see it that it burns them up because they have created this system that has oppressed people forever. And I hope, you know, and we get passionate and we joke and we laugh and have a good time, but I hope that we're all savoring what we're doing because it might not seem like it in the moment, but generations beyond us are gonna say, wow, those people were in it and they were, they were doing it. And, and you know, we have a chance to really undo a lot of the ills of this society. And it is never lost on me that I'm doing it with you guys. And, and the work that all of us put in is so special. And you know, even though we might not get everything done, there are a lot of people who are with us and we're only growing the movement and it's, it's special. And I just want to read them. I just have one quick request. That's it. And then you're leaving? No. <laughs> so I want to plug redemption because Delegate Bourne just made this beautiful statement about redemption. And you will hear us talk a lot about black and brown communities tonight. But the one thing, and, and he knows this best being from Southwest, redemption is not only to be had by black and brown people. There are people throughout this entire commonwealth of all shades that will benefit from redemption, legislation, and criminal justice reform. Southwest Virginia has some of the highest drug overdose rates in the entire Commonwealth. So you can't tell me that there are people in those communities that deserve a second chance because they were preyed upon by drug companies. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear me on the floor talk passionately about the fact that yeah, you talk to law enforcement. Yeah, you talk to prosecutors. Did you talk to your people? Because guess what? These things are going to help them too. So maybe the source of some of where, you know, this work we're doing comes from representing our communities. I know in my heart that these things stand to impact all types of citizens in Virginia.
not just black and brown communities, but especially black and brown communities. And that, 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 is, that is the exact same sort of, um, you know, other, other people could hear it differently when it was a different community, supposedly that was experiencing it. But when we were talking about, you know, the LGBTQIA plus community getting protections within the non-discrimination bill, people were so focused about, you know, what they believed in, what they don't believe in. Like, how do you not believe in human beings that are standing right in front of you that like need justice, A. Hey, but anyway, the what, what we were able to do for that bill, though it may be under the protections, we actually made protections for all protected classes stronger. And so, you know, the tide that lifts all boats, when we are collaborative and when we are working together and we, we are aiming for justice for the most marginalized, everybody else is covered. So, you know, people ask me, why are you always talking about race? Because no one else is. <laughs> like how many times would the word black be said if it wasn't for the five of us plus some of our friends, right? And so if nobody else is going to talk, I would love to talk about other things because we had achieved racial equity and justice, right? I, I have other interests, but until we do, this is, this is what we have to continue to fight for. So I, I, I know we're coming to, to Bagby. I do want to let y'all know that um, we have maintained a viewership but we all need to get some rest because we have some votes for tomorrow. So let's promise that there'll be a part two because I think one of the parts about our conversations that are helpful is A, we need y'all to understand that we are humans. We are humans with thoughts, emotions, families, uh, you know, jobs and all of this. But when we are processing things, you know, so people like to throw out there, politicians, this politics, all politicians are not created the same. All politicians are not created the same. Get to know us and then understand how to communicate with us as we're working together. So we do have some parts of this conversation that will hold off to the second part. So don't think that this is the end. But Delegate Bagby, you were about to say something. No, no, no. Because... Close us out. No, 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 wait. He can't close us out, but he can make no, us. No, I, I, I wouldn't disrespect your show like that. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't. You know, I'm a guest. I'm a guest. I, would, I can't wait till Jay and Jeff start doing their thing. Um, Low competition. Yeah, they probably don't invite me to to theirs more often. Um, <laughs> but if people can put in the comment section what they want, what they are most anxious to see us do next, as we That's look good. forward to special session. That's good. And and understand that um, we talk about the the the, the high high publicity issues. Uh, <clears throat> The predatory lending, the, the criminal justice reform, the redistricting. But let me tell you, I, I hope this is not lost on anybody. I know it's not lost on, on the five of y'all or, or any of our uh, folks that, that support us. In 2020, Lamont Bagby had to carry a bill to require the removal of racist covenants and restrictions and deeds in the Commonwealth in 2020 that's how much work is left to be done so when you see us getting passionate about issues that affect black people don't don't label us this or don't label us that just know that we are being the change and we're doing the work uh, i'll oh. say that one more time oh. 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 <laughs> say that one more time <laughs> what's Man. up with that tag see, now, now, I'm, now i'm pandering to get an invite back yes yeah, i was about to say <laughs> Can, can, but can we like put like as like a, a topic for another one because like that's a whole nother thing, right? We have and, so much to say that we haven't said to you all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and oh. Marcy is right. It, it is getting towards people's bedtimes, myself included. Um, and, and, uh, and so before we close, because I know. Wait, <laughs> wait, Aaron. Oh, Aaron, you might have blinked out. He was still talking. <laughs> Well, I told her before there was no screaming. Shout out to my wife who's watching with us too, even though it's past her bedtime. <laughs> no, no, I no, mean, look, I, I was just gonna say, I mean, you know, Lamont's right. We there's more stuff to voting and making here and people who have their debt society get back into this. It's housing, which has been de facto forever, right? I mean, you know, there's so many things. I just, I want to continue to have 
these uncomfortable conversations. But that's where you're going to elicit growth from people. And yes, it's listening to us we live this and we walk through this world each and every day with a different perspective than, than a lot of people. But it's the people who don't look like us. So I'm challenging, right, to go out and, and, and have the conversation. Put yourself in, in, in a weird spot. If you don't feel okay, like if you don't feel great, that's good. Yep. And that's going to help you. And what are we talking about? Because I can't reasonably understand what's happening in Southwest Virginia until I go out there, right? I, I, you know, I, I, people understand what's happening in Tidewater, Norfolk. And you come and walk through and you talk to the residents. It's the same, it's the same thing everywhere. But I just want people to change themselves because that's what's going to put us in a position where it's not just us carrying the ball. And, and, and us carrying the water because we can't do it alone. And you literally segue into what I was going to say. You know, as I look at you all as we're having this conversation and I think about what we've been through together, I think people need to know that we've cried over these issues together. We have been angry over these issues together. We feel every bit of this process deep down in our souls. And, and the one thing that I wanted to say in closing is, this is like part one, and we still have to get through the Senate. And so for advocates that are watching, advocates that are listening, I don't need you to call me. Right. I don't need you to spam email me. I'm with you. I need you to call those Democrats that aren't really Democrats, that have a vote, and can hold up our legislation from becoming actual law. And so... When I think about the rest of this, the rest of the journey that we have to go to actually make it so that what we're talking about tonight becomes a reality, I need people to know, number one, what you think you're seeing with your eyes wide open, it is reality. It's not happenstance. You think that some of these Democrats made accidents on some of these bills, they did not. Ooh. They attempted <clears throat> that because it matters, not just right now, but it will matter in six months when it's time to run for reelection. Well, we're going to come back to that in part two. I'm talking specifically about getting through the Senate. When you think about some of the approach, approaches that have been taken, let your voices be heard. Don't just listen conceptually to top line issues and think, oh, I'm for that. I'll use my own bill, for example. And, and then I'm going to close it out because it's late. You have two very different versions of no-knock search warrants in the House and in the Senate. Yeah. You're going to hear both of us talk about the fact that Oh, you care about this issue? Then you want to support this. No, I need you to know that there is a difference between the approaches that are being taken in the House and the approaches that are being taken in the Senate. So this is my call to action to voters, to advocates, to protesters in the street that made it possible for us to even be having a special session. I want you to talk to those people who do not typically hear a voice like yours. Yeah. That's Republicans, that's Democrats in non-Black and Brown communities. And I need you to personalize your experience and share with them why this work we are doing is so critical and why it can't wait. And that's my piece. So, so the only thing I that I want to- can, can I add a couple things to what she said? Just a couple more bills. And I want to, 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 to put a finer point on the examples of the difference between the Senate and the House. Look at the immunity bill. There's not one in the Senate. They killed that early, early. Two, look at Marcus Alert. Senator McClellan, Black Caucus member, and I had the same exact bill. They rolled her bill into another senator's. I'm going to leave it right there. You can read the story from the right Richmond Times Dispatch. Um, but um, I'll, put our, I'll put the House's agenda, the Black Caucus's agenda, up against anybody's for this special session. Absolutely. And, and, and one more thing before I close. Somebody mentioned earlier, I can't remember who it was, starting September 18th, no excuse absentee voting. Vote early. If you're going to vote by mail, vote early. Don't want any mix-ups with the mail service. We know how things are getting trumped up uh, with Ooh. the mail. Because um, we got to, we got that's what we got to do. And we've made it easier through a lot of hard work from folks on this call. Uh, from folks on the Zoom, from folks uh, in the legislature, we made it easier and, and given greater access to the ballot. So make sure y'all get out there and use it. 
Absolutely. The only thing that I would add to that, because I was going to say voting too, is your census. If you have not filled out your census, the absolute deadline is the end of this month. So it's 2020census.gov. If you need to have your rights restored uh, in order to vote, you need to do that now. And you can go to restore.virginia.gov and you might be able to get your rights restored in time to register and then participate in this year's election. So if anybody that you need needs to get their rights restored, that's restore.virginia.gov. Even if you didn't watch this live, if you came to this after we were done talking, please continue to put topics that you wanna hear us discuss in the comments. There will be a part two uh, Delegate Aaron and I will also take back our show, and we have some things that we want to cover as well. But oh, um, oh, yeah, y'all can be guests on on um, Jeff Jeff on our Jeff, show. Yeah. Yeah. Come to Death Row. Yeah. But do you have a mug? <laughs> but do you have a mug? <laughs> All the video. I got a, I got Not a yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We talked Not about yet, a whole lot tonight. And it, it might not be a mug. Yeah. It might be something we're swaggier. Okay? We're we're gonna, so, no, we're, we're so, so don't. Don't forget y'all can get kicked out because my co-host is trying to say hey, something. Listen, listen, hey, we 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 gonna have snifters for today. I'm gonna yeah, mark. with the you big cue. What what I'm going to say is I want to thank the chairman, Delegate Bourne, Delegate Jones. You all don't know they really go to bed early for staying up late with us, having this conversation. They didn't do it for us, they did it for you. Um, we can't always have this kind of real conversation with you. Uh, we should, because we want you to know that we oftentimes feel the same way you do. Um, but we were at a point where we thought enough was enough and we needed to have this conversation. I promise that there is so much more for us to say, just not tonight. And so please, please, please continue to join us each legislative session as we're doing this work continue to do your part and just ultimately thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate you. And with that, yeah, I would never you. have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs>